<clears throat> okay, um, this is a reply to the four questions asked to me by Mosque Watcher. Okay, the first question is, even if Israel conceded all the land of the, this being disputed between them and the Palestinians, would Arab Muslims like them any better? Well, the answer to that question is a definitive no. First of all, it's not only would the Arab Muslims dislike them, all the Muslims would dislike them because this is the Orthodox Islamic view about the Jews. The Jews are kufar, just like Christians, just like Buddhists, just like atheists, just like everyone else on the planet Earth who is not a, a Muslim, they are Kafirs. But there's a special enmity and hatred for Jews and Christians above all the rest of the Catholics. Because it says in the Quran about these pigs and monkeys from the filthy Jews. It says, Verily you will find them, the Jews, the greediest of mankind for life, and even greedier than those who ascribe partners to Allah. Do not believe in resurrection. Every one of them wishes that he could be given a life of a thousand years, but the grant of such life will not save him even a little from the punishment. And Allah is all seer of what they do. So um, it's clear, the Jews are cursed. If the Jews bow down, if the Jews give up all the land, they will still be Jews. See, this is the real problem, that they are Jews, they are kufar. They are the enemies of Allah. They are the ones who Allah transformed into pigs and monkeys when they disobeyed Prophet Musa alayhi salam. So, let's move on to the next question. Can Muslims have, have Jewish and Christians as their friends? Well, let's see what the Quran and the Sunnah says about this. Now, I'm going to tell you from my... Um, personal experience is no a Muslim cannot take a Jew or a Christian or any Kafir as a friend we are only friends with the believers not with the Kufar we do not make allegiance with the Kufar this is the doctrine of al wala wal bara enmity and allegiance and enmity allegiance for the believers for the people of Tawheed and enmity for the people of Shirk, the Mushrikeen, the Kufar. So let's see what the, uh, what the uh, Quran says about this subject. O you who believe, take not as your advisors, consultants, protectors, helpers, and friends, those outside of your religion, pagans, Jews, Christians, hypocrites, since they will not fail to do the best to corrupt you. They desire to harm you severely. This is from Ali Imran, chapter 3, verse 118. And the previous quote, I didn't give the chapter and verse for that, The one I? about the Jews being greedy, that is from um, Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 96. So, as you see, no, you commanded specifically in the Quran not to take the Kufar, that includes the Christians and Jews, as your friends. They are not your friends. Question number three. Jihad. Does it mean inner struggle or something else? Well, you'll see a lot of Islamic apologists, a lot of the Sufis, like uh, Hamza Yusuf, or as sometimes he's called Hamza Useless. They are apologists for Islam and they say no jihad. It's just inner struggle. It's the inner struggle you have against your nafs, against the lower self, the sinful self. In part, this is true. Um, the word jihad, it does mean struggle. Um, but you have to make a distinction between the linguistic meaning of these Arabic words and how these words are understood and applied in Sharia law. Yeah. And linguistically, it means struggle. But when it comes to the Sharia, 
all four Sunni schools of Islamic thought are in agreement that jihad takes on three different forms, right? One form is an inner struggle against yourself to comply with the laws and dictates of the Sharia law. This is true. A second form is jihad of the pen. This is the jihad of the scholars, the jihad of the duat, Islamic preachers, when they propagate Islam and they uh, refute the Christians, the Jews, the atheists, and whoever. Um, so this is a form of jihad. You know, when these Islamic organizations, they have conferences, they make videos, they make tapes, they put out YouTube uh, videos against other ideologies or try to defend Islam, this is a form of jihad. And number three, there is a military jihad. There definitely is a military jihad. And the military jihad takes on two forms in, within itself. One is a jihad of self-defense. This means if the kuffar, the non-Muslims, enter the Islamic land, dar you iman, dar, dar you Islam, the Islamic land, it's incumbent on all the inhabitants of that land to repel them and to fight them. And if they're not able to repel and fight them, then, then the lands closest to them that have, have Muslims, it's incumbent upon them to come and join the battle against the kuffar. And so on and so on and so on until the whole entire world of Muslims have to respond and come and fight on behalf of the Muslims to expel the kuffar from the lands of belief. That's one form of military jihad. The second form of military jihad is an offensive jihad against the kuffar to fight them to make Allah's name uppermost on the earth. To make the Quran uppermost on the earth to establish the Sharia as the law of the land. To make Islam the uh, number one ideology in religion. Now there is rumblings in the Islamic world, in the, uh, in the world of Islamic scholarship about how do you apply this. Now there are some who say, you, in order to do offensive jihad, you must have a khali khalifa. Meaning, you must have a head of the Islamic State. You must have the Sultan, the leader of the Islamic State in place. And only he can call for this offensive jihad. So, when you hear uh, the, uh, a lot of Muslims and a lot of Muslim organizations say, we're not going to fight jihad, we don't want to fight jihad, this is what they mean. They mean, we don't have a Khalifa yet. So we can't fight jihad against you, because we don't have a Khalifa yet. But when the day comes, we do have a Khalifa. Then the Khalifa can call for jihad, and we can smite your neck, cut off your hands, cut off your fingertips like the Quran says to do to the Kufar. Now, there's another group of Muslims who say, no, 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 there's no condition that there has to be a, a Khalifa. That's not a condition. You can go out right now and fight the Kufar because the Quran and the Sunnah dictate that we are in perpetual jihad and war against the non-Muslims and you can take it upon yourself you can take it upon yourself to form a sale or group of people and go out and make jihad and you can make jihad any way, any way that you can because the kuffar are powerful the kuffar of America the kuffar of uh, the Jewish state they are powerful the kuffar of Russia they are powerful they have weapons they have um, they have technology, they have soldiers, so if that means you have to strap on a suicide belt, you have to use asymmetrical warfare, whatever you got to do, you can do it under Sharia law. So these are the two opinions and there's fighting among the Muslims about which one of these are the correct view. So that's enough for that question, we're moving on to the next question. What are the three options for non-Muslims under Sharia law? One, convert, two, submit and pay jizya, or three, the death penalty. Now, first of all, as I said uh, before, um, it's in the, in the Sharia, it's not, you know, non-Muslim sounds very sanitized. It's very politically correct. I will call you what the Quran and Sunnah say you are. That is a kafir. You are a kafir. You are from the kuffar, from the disbelievers, from those who who block the truth in your heart. You have not received the truth of the Quran and the Sunnah, the truth of the Shahada, you are a Kafir. That's what you are. 
and these people are Kafirs. So what happens to the Kafir under the Islamic State? Well, you got it pretty much right. One is that you will be offered the terms of becoming a Muslim, which is best for you. In the condition you are as a, as a filthy Kafir, Kafir, the best thing for you is to become a Muslim, to take your Shahada and join the fold of Islam, and to join the fold of brotherhood. You will be our brother, you will be our sister in Islam, in, under a Sharia law, ideology, you will be the brother and sister in Islam, and you will be treated with the correct rights the Sharia gives you. If you do not want to do that, the second option for you is that you find yourself in submission to the Islamic State, that you find yourself in submission to the Khalifa, you obey his dictates and his laws and his rules and his regulations, and you pay the jizya tax, you make uh, monetary gifts to the Islamic State, you pay tribute to the Islamic State, and you will receive protection and you will be uh, dimmi under Islamic law. Uh, the third option, if you don't want to do that, is jihad, is death. You will be fought against, and uh, you can put up a defense if you want, but in the end, you will have your neck cut, you will be crucified, you will have your hands and your feet cut off from opposite ends, you will be put to death and put out of your filthy, misery. So there you have it. The four questions answered from the Quran and Sunnah. This is Islamic law. This is what Islam teaches. Whether someone wants to uh, acknowledge that or not, if they want to cover it up or not, they want to dress it up or not, if Hamza Yusuf wants to make it seem really not that way, don't believe him. All you have to do is consult any books of fiqh from the four schools of Islamic thought from Sunni Islamic thought, you can just pick up the Quran, you can pick up Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, uh, Ibn, uh, you know, uh, D Ibn Dawood, uh, Ch uh, Ch Chimadi, any of these books, and you can see for yourself. So I hope I answered those questions for you. So good day, and take care.